But he said these things hinges. They're a hidden but essential component of our modern day life. As far as I can work out, there's two ways to approach that. You could do this, which is brilliant if you're making things like gay hinges or contraptions for holding people in place so you can throw tomatoes at them for doing those irritating things like leaving the shopping trolleys in parking places. Or you could do this, which is absolutely brilliant for model making, and which is what we do an awful lot of. So I plan on going through how to make a hinge this way, but it's a bit more interesting than any other hinge. I mean, that's the kind of thing that people say who collect stamps. Ah, this is interesting, but it is interesting because hinges normally you have to make in parts and assemble the parts together. This is a way to make a hinge that you print all in one go and it still works as a hinge. So let's do that. Okay, so here we are in the Tinkercad workspace. So the first thing you need is a cylinder. Just click it and drop it. I always put the ruler on so I can see the size of everything and we need to resize this. Now I'm going to make this 8mm by 8mm. So change those to 8mm and the thing will automatically change. I want to make this 10mm high or a centimetre high and there's our cylinder in the right dimension. That's the first part of it. The next thing we're going to need is a cone. So let's zoom in on that. In order to move this incidentally, print hold down the shift key and use your right hand mouse button. Select a cone and that cone needs to be a little bit less so we're going to do that six millimeters by six millimeters and we want to keep the angle at 45 degrees so we also make it six millimeters high. Now the cone and the cylinder are resting on the workspace plate at zero. We move that cone up to ten which is the height of the cylinder that we just made. Now we can align those two. We can align those two by highlighting them, clicking align, and then select the one you want to align it to by clicking it, and then we can align that to the centre and that's perfectly aligned. That is the base unit of the hinge that we're going to make. So we put those together and merge them as one piece and we have our base unit. Now we want to replicate this a couple of times. So one replication and two replications and there we go. Put that out of the way for the second because we're going to deal with those two bits there. What we need to do with those two bits there are turn them 90 degrees so they're at the plane. So turn it around 90 degrees and turn the other one around 90 degrees. Now we want to check those are actually on the plane because when you turn them it turns them around the center as opposed to turning them around the base and it rises them up, raises them up rather. You can see this is now four millimeters high and we want that on the base so change that to zero and change that one to zero. Now they're resting on the workspace so you can see the join so let's move them apart. Now, when you do it like that, they're very often centred, but you can check the centering again just by highlighting them, hitting the centering, and then centre them to one or the other, and we'll end up with them centred. Once we've got those nicely centred, we can do the same thing we did before. We can highlight them and group them, and we end up with a single unit. That is the internal of the hinge, and we want to connect it to a flap of some kind that we can either attach or make it part of another print and that flap needs to be 8mm high because the hinge is 8mm high. So reset those sizes to 8 and we're going to leave that 20 by 20 and again we can centre it. And there we go, nicely centred and we can move that down. That's the centre of the hinge finished. Now if we group it, it'll all stay in its same place. Now we need to deal with this one. To deal with this one we need to ungroup it, zoom in on it, and turn the cone around. We need the cone turning 180 degrees. It will now sit at 10. Remember the cone is 6 high, so we need to change that to 4 from the base plate and that will drop the cone into the cylinder, make the cone a hole, highlight it, and group it, and we end up with a cone indenting a cylinder. And we need another one of those. Now we need to turn those 90 degrees. One goes one way, and the other will go the other way. 
we need to align that again, but we need to align it to the center, so I ungroup it because we're going to align it to that piece. If you hold down the shift key and hit them, click on them, then it will select them. We can center it to the one that we want and we center it up. There and there. Okay, it's now nicely centered. And we can move that forward by clicking on it so it's selected and hitting the cursor key to move it in until it butts against the original hinge that we did. In order to look at that, we make it a hole. And then when it's a hole, it's like a frame and we can see through it. And you can see when it's buttered, the two cones fit nicely inside each other. So move them apart two millimetres and it creates this gap. Now we do exactly the same thing to the other side, but this time we rotate it the other way. To move across the screen, press down the shift key and the right click on your mouse and drag it to a convenient point. Again, we want to centre them, so select the two pieces by holding down the shift key and left clicking on them. Click on one that you want to centre it to and then you can centre to the one that you've clicked. There we go. We do exactly the same thing. We can select the cylinder we want, we can make it a cone. And then we can use the cursor keys to move it in until it butts against it. And then we move it back one, two. You can see that we've got these two cones now sticking into recesses and that forms the basis of the hinge. Now we want to join those two up and we do that with some blocks. Make these eight by ten. and move it in halfway. Then we can group them. Now as you move that in, you'll notice that the cone we made is actually being filled. So what you do is you ungroup the cone, and now we select each item again by holding down the shift key and left clicking the mouse on each of those three and you'll see that there are three shapes selected group them have a look at the piece of work as a whole and you'll find that it actually fits rather nicely do exactly the same to the other side and you can see we've preserved the whole Now we join those up by using yet another block. Size it so it joins the two end arms together. And then slide the block in place. Now we group everything up. And there you go, there is your hinge. And that is how I made the hinge for this, the flapping unit for the wind harvester. There it is printed and off the bed, and as you can see, it's free to flutter. And you can use that hinge for all kinds of things. And the beauty of it is, no assembly is required. It comes straight off the printer and it's ready to use. Now it works because the angle of the cone is 45 degrees. And in a standard setting in a slicer, if it's 50 degrees or anything else, then it won't print support. So at 45 degrees, no support is printed, yet the whole thing holds together because it can still print that, and it prints it with that gap, making the hinge for you. I thought it was awesome, particularly for something like this, because in something like this, you need to make a couple of hundred of them. You want as little assembly as possible. So I thought I would share it with you. I hope you enjoyed the video. Thank you very much for watching. And please do remember to like, subscribe and click the bell notification.